Well, hello and welcome to Outdoor Oklahoma. I'm Todd Craighead. The Wildlife Department's Controlled Hunch Program is probably one of the most successful and most popular things that we've ever offered. It's really a win-win for the resource and for hunters. Now, there are several purposes for the controlled hunts, one of which is to help manage or reduce the number of hunters on a public area to a safe, controllable number. Another purpose is to reduce the risk of over-harvesting a game species on any public area. But yet, a third purpose is really probably the most exciting, and that's to provide an opportunity for a limited number of hunters each year to pursue a species in an area of the state where maybe that species isn't plentiful enough to be able to justify an open season for an unlimited number of hunters. One such unique opportunity is a gun hunt for antelope in the panhandle. Now, the number of permits each year is determined by aerial surveys conducted by our wildlife biologists. Now, this particular hunt is literally a once in a lifetime opportunity, meaning that once a hunter is drawn out, they can't even apply for it ever again. It's one of the most coveted tags in our program. And today we have a rare treat to be able to follow along with one such lucky hunter. Wade Free has been putting in for the antelope drawing ever since it was first offered in 1987. Turns out, last year was definitely Wade's lucky year. A lot of times you take a flag, a white flagging piece of paper or something, when they're way out there and they see the white and they just think it's another antelope or their rump patch and out of curiosity, they'll come and check it out. He's pegged this and he's, he's a mile away looking straight at us. And we got him through the spotting scope. And they're incredible with their eyesight. But sometimes their curiosity gets the best of them. He's about a mile northwest of us. And he, he stood there and watched us for 15 minutes. But now he's moving to the right. So the plan is we're gonna go down this fence line Try to get another look at him and try to find us a, a gully or some cover or something to try to figure out where he's headed and get in there ahead of him. I'm still not perfectly certain that he's a really nice one, but he's one of the better ones we've seen. So we're gonna make a move. It's gonna be about a mile and a half probably. And then if we can get glasses on him, we'll get out and make the stop. Yeah, we, we got on this antelope mid-morning and got in position and it looked pretty good. I got my tripod set up and I had him within about 250 and I'm set up behind a yucca and if I didn't have a rattlesnake right under my feet. Rattlesnake, there's a rattlesnake right here. Yeah, rattlesnake. 
and I'm setting up my tripod, looking at the antelope off the side of my scope while I've got a rattler rattling right below my feet. And I spent just enough time trying not to get bit by a snake that he got out of position and got behind some other vegetation and I lost the shot. It's a long shot. We are conducting a mandatory hunter check-in right now to get all the hunters in so I can later conduct uh, su success rates, basically trying to estimate um, what kind of harvest we had. Uh, don't, don't go across the highway. <laughs> That's going to be all those box canyons. And, yeah. We've got a quarter motel room that works really well for hunters. Uh, they will come in wanting to know best hunting te techniques, uh, where the big one's at, things like that. I try to help them out as much as possible, but, uh, you know, we still have to make it a hunt, you know. So uh, they, they do a lot of scouting. Uh, it's definitely wide open country, so therefore you see a lot of country and a lot of animals, so you get to, to play with the, the field judging aspect of it and find out what a good mature antelope looks like versus young ones. Conferences, length, length of prong, they get kind of tricky to judge. So I'm going to spend at least most of the day comparing different animals on the place that I have to hunt. And maybe we'll pick up a good one. We're after one of the most beautiful animals in the country, for sure, in Oklahoma. Pronghorn native only to North America and more pound. I've been putting in for the controlled antelope hunt as well as some other hunts for years. This is a pretty tough hunt to draw. And when I found out this year that I was drawn, I was like, whoa, I can't believe it. Being a once in a lifetime hunt, uh, I've hunted antelope before. I know there's some really good antelope if you take your time and study them. And it takes a, it takes a lot of practice to learn length and circumference and prong length and all that, depth of body. And a lot of times it's at long distance. so. I thought I better round up my spotting scope and my binoculars and get practiced up. Spent most of the first day just looking the property over and seeing what animals were out there. You don't want to shoot the first one you see. You also, by the end of the day, you see 10 or 12. You kind of learn what you've got out there and you know what you might want to do on the second or third day. And we did that. Yeah, I had an idea what kind of animal I was looking for. 
uh, you know, everybody talks about Boone and Crockett, you know, record deer, record antelope, but I'm trying to be realistic. And if I saw a 15 incher, I knew for this country, that was gonna be a good one. And they kill some bigger than that, but probably the average antelope killed in the panhandle is around 13. So I thought if I could even get close to 15, I'd be lucky. That'd be my second luck. Drawing was the first and to get a really unique animal of size is second. I always like to scout the property I'm hunting ahead of time. I don't want to pull the trigger on the first antelope because you're gonna you're gonna see some nice animals and if you shoot the first one you're done. Just the mere beauty of the place would be something that would keep you out here, so I wait and I'm patient. What I really like to do is pack my camera along. Once I put the scope on them or the binoculars and decide yes or no, need a little bit bigger one, different prong or whatever, I'll just set my camera up and take pictures of them. And then when I get back tonight, I can kind of compare photos and decide during the day which one was the best and also remember where he was. So I always pack a camera so I can kind of document it. Also, you can get some really great shots out in this country. The county is beautiful and you'll have some shots, some outdoor pictures that you can't get anywhere else. It's so beautiful, it's almost like you're not in Oklahoma. Uh, so always pack a good camera and if you're not shooting the gun, you're shooting the camera so you can get a double benefit out of it. Which is what I like about this country. It's open, the expanses are just awesome. You see a lot of country. A lot of people drive through this country and think, what's out there? It's just flat, nothing. But this is one of the richest, most awesome counties we have in Oklahoma. If you haven't spent much time here, you're missing out. I spent most of the day, well, I spent the entire day, probably 12 hours just trying to find every animal that I thought might be on the place. think that we're standing here today and you can still see the trails they're actually greener because they're a kind of a depression which helps with moisture so they end up the trail itself ends up a little greener than the surrounding vegetation but there's four distinct trails right here most people think of the trail as one trail like one road but there's actually four trails it's it's really hard to fathom that wagons went right through here where we're standing. It just, it's kind of hard to grasp. Yeah, I got in on one antelope that was real curious. He was a younger animal, and he spotted me actually before I spotted him, but he's about 100 yards away, and he just straight lined right at me. To that point, that was the highlight of the hunt. I've never been that close 
to an antelope out in the middle of the wide open. Straight line stalk. That's crazy. How awesome was that? That was just a rare treat, so that was something I'll never forget. Why couldn't that one be a giant? Look at that. We are, we've got one about a half a mile. It's the best one we've seen in two days. So we're gonna try to get down low and sneak up to him without pushing him. When you see the one that you want to shoot, you don't have to look a lot. He's underneath the Choya cactus, bedded, looking right at us. I knew after seeing 15 different animals that that's the one we're going to pursue. Right now he's about a half a mile away. We have to keep the wind in our favor. I start getting nervous and I don't get that nervous. This guy, I mean, I couldn't even get my breathing going. I set my tripod up, had a rest and I was shaking so bad. There's no way I was gonna make that shot. At that time he's around 300. I just can't get steady on him. I need to chill out my breathing. I actually had to throw my tripod down and get on the ground to get a better anchor because I was shaking so much. I can't get steady. He's over there. God, that's a nice one. That's what we came here to do. <laughs> Man, I get excited like a kid and it just all came together and it was amazing. And it's a once in a lifetime hunt. I'll never do it again. Yeah. Man, I got nervous. Man, I usually don't do that, but he's a good one. You're never too old for buck fever. I couldn't even breathe. I don't know, you probably heard it on camera. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't control my breathing. Wow, nice one. Man, I'm telling you, that's what we've been after. That is a good 15 to 16, five inch prongs, and probably six inch circumferences. But I have a hunt and a memory that is gonna last a lifetime. And the pictures and things of, from this hunt will last my, last, last my kids a lifetime. And that's what it's really about. And I think they're more proud. I sent them a couple pictures through the iPhone and they're probably prouder of it than I am. But I spent a lot of time taking them hunting and I think they're finally glad to see dad get out and do something like that. And it's great. I got a once in a lifetime hunt and definitely 
a once in a lifetime pronghorn, big old five inch prongs on him. And he was, he, this is actually better than I thought I would end up with. And he's, I mean, he's a definite stud. And just overall, there's, it's just an amazing experience. And it's just, you can't beat it. Hey, congratulations to Wade on an awesome buck on the hunt of a lifetime. Now the controlled hunts application period usually begins in April and runs through mid-May. And it's also done completely online at wildlifedepartment.com. If you follow us on social media or receive our news releases, we'll make sure that you're well aware of any deadlines. And for tips on applying and the results from last year's hunts, as well as the odds of being drawn for each different hunt, be sure to check out the January-February issue of Outdoor Oklahoma Magazine, where it contains a detailed section with all that information. Last year, for all hunts combined, the odds of being drawn were 1 in 22, and that's pretty good if you ask me. Hey, thanks for joining us today. And for all of us at your wildlife department, I'm Todd Craighead, and we'll see you right here next time on Outdoor Oklahoma. Mm -hmm.